It's True Faith TV. I'm Alex and Charlotte is on the other side of the screen to meet tonight. Charlotte, it's been a break, has it not? There's been no Newcastle United football. Everything is going so well or was going so well, Charlotte, because we've got to talk about Sandro Tonali, according to the Daily Mail tonight, going to be banned for more than 12 months for playing for Newcastle United. Often in these situations, I find a lot of fans, understandably, want to put a brave face in it. They want to say... He's sixth choice anyway, a lie. They want to say, uh, we're behind him no matter what. Maybe also a lie. I think it's an absolute fucking disaster, Charlotte. Thoughts? Yeah, <clears throat> no Newcastle United men's games this break, I will say. There was a women's game. There was a women's game. They didn't win, but they didn't lose. We love that. We love an unbeaten. So you are wrong, Alex. That I pointed at the camera like it's the audience but actually I mean you yeah it is a fucking disaster that Tonali is going to get banned um any ban would be any length ban would be a disaster in my eyes even if it was just a few weeks because we've got a really important few weeks coming up but it looks like it might be between 12 and 18 months which is significantly more than a few weeks is certainly not what we bought him for for all that money um <laughs> to to just train and be in the background I don't know how to spin this one. I don't know how to spin this one into it's going to be okay. Willock might come back soon. That is good. We need that option, but we extra need it now. It wouldn't. It wasn't like creating competition, and before it would have been like creating competition, like all of that stuff. And now it's just like fuck me. We absolutely need something because if we're going to lose Tenali, who was just getting bedded into the league getting bedded into Eddie Howe's style of play a lot of people have said it's a great opportunity for him to really train with the squad and and all of that stuff but that means fucking nothing <laughs> he is gonna be ripped he is gonna be I'm ripped gonna be Charlotte. Huge. yeah he's gonna be massive yeah I agree with everything you say I particularly enjoy the Joe Willock point come back Joe we miss you grow a new hamstring if you have to you but ultimately the idea the purpose of the signing was for Sandro and Joe to play together and also play with all of the other class lads to make us even more class and Charlotte the cold realization as I sat at work today and kind of realized to myself that we spent the hundred million pounds on two footballers in the summer and Harvey Barnes and Sandro Tonali and the likelihood sat here right now is that Sandro might play against Palace at the weekend and maybe in the Champions League next week but neither of them are probably going to play again this season not sure that was it definitely wasn't the plan. Uh, how disastrous it'll be, we'll find out. Um, we can roll with some of these punches, but fuck me, Charlotte. It's Imagine if that was the plan. <laughs> you said that definitely wasn't the plan. Imagine if that was the plan. You'd have some serious words with the management and people making decisions. The plan is to spend $100 million on two players who will show promise so everyone will get excited. <laughs> And then neither of them will be able to play. But although Harvey Barnes, they said maybe after Christmas. Yeah, but it's an Eddie Howe maybe after Christmas. So I oh, assume he's never going Christmas back. 2024 for the 2025 20, run in. He's desperately um, unwell, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's, Sorry, he's lost a foot. Um, <laughs> the, back to Tenali, the you know, I want to say in all seriousness, but this is not a serious show. So what? You know, <laughs> small magazine thing. Oh. Um, but in all seriousness, like. It is really bad. And I think there was like a kind of a move on social media, at least to kind of do the modern thing of just like everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Bad things aren't supposed to happen to me. So it's all bullshit. It's a lie. It's Italian sensationalism. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Um, it, was, it wasn't It was football betting. It was just blackjack. Or some just, shit. A, just a little bit of blackjack. Yeah, yeah kind of guy down on an illegal website on a bit of blackjack in a spare time god and then it was well ac milan couldn't have known and now the reality is dawning upon us that when ac milan comes to james's park we might have bailiffs waiting for them i'm just putting <laughs> it out there like like well the surprise sale of your best player your hero the man who was going to be a talisman for the club who grew up just outside of milan with pirlo <laughs> as his hero you sold him in the summer without any real fanfare. Yeah, we, we were surprised to get the call. You called us. <laughs> what was all that about? 
But yeah, so that that's an added bit of spice to our last Champions League game. It is really bad. I'm sorry and sad that he has a he says he has a, a gambling addiction. That's yeah, terrible for him. And on a on a deeply personal level, it's kind of almost good to you know it must have been uh, kind of tormenting him. You know, mm. like reading coming to England and reading why all the stuff about Ivan Tony why he's not playing and knowing knowing he's in a similar situation just must be a really shit time. But mm. ultimately, Charlotte. We are supposed to be, you know, a better team with our sixty of I don't know how much it costs, fifty three or sixty million. You you look it up. Use the internet. Okay. A lot of money. Will do. <laughs> and he's not and he's not playing is is you know, what what do you think it does to the, the squad, Charlotte, if anything? What does it do to Eddie, to Mad Dog, to everyone? Just this is a big thing. I feel like it's been downplayed because everyone's been so desperate for things to just be okay, but they're not okay. This is bad. I'd be fucking furious if I was in the squad. I would be furious and sympathetic because like you say, an addiction is a, a really crippling thing and he's probably been through some quite significant issues or like mental turmoil as a result of, of knowing what he's got under his belt. But the other thing is like this highlights, we just announced the signing of a head of psychology this today, I think at time of recording on Wednesday it highlights the need for that. These people are so young. Like, Tenali's only about 23. It's Six very... months older than Gordon. That, I, I love that stat. Someone told me it. I didn't look it up myself. But, like, it's so Gordon is perceived as a young baby. Yes. Tenali's only six months older than him. Yeah, an, an adult man. A big, strong <laughs> adult man. Yeah, and, and so, I like, it does highlight the need. It's, it's like child stars, isn't it? It's like, you yeah. know, without that kind of protection and um, boundary setting... Um, you, you can find yourself in, not everybody, but some some young people in that situation can find themselves in some quite big trouble in, uh, in their early adulthood. And so, like, I do have a lot of sympathy for that, but I also would be fucking really livid. <laughs> so you're allowed to feel lots of things at once. It's allowed. I love that point. I love that point. Not, not you know, different emotions and different strands of opinion can all be true or untrue. It hasn't actually happened yet. It's all kind of media reports, mm. but... Fucking hell, this football club. No, you'll enjoy it. It's, the, the people are good. The team's good. we are settling very well there. Anyway, let's move on, Charlotte, to point number two, which was uh, you actually sent me some photos of... Would you believe it? <laughs> this, yeah, normally it's the other way around. Uh, <laughs> this, this international break. What's going on? Um, well, Callum Wilson's back in training. And with a typically Callum Wilson caption, which was, you get what you work for, not what you wish for. Yeah, which, put that on. yeah that was the caption. <laughs> and um, so true. So yeah, true, Callum. He's right. But he also, um, by like announcing his return to training, it was three topless shots. He had, you know, he had this sort of um, monitor thing on that looks like a sort of uh, holster type thing that they wear and and shorts and boots and probably socks but like nothing else just topless like needlessly topless and my main thing is he's just come back from injury right look none of us are complaining about the topless pictures like none of us are saying oh I'm not Mary Whitehousing my way around this like I'm not like oh I'm offended like whatever I'm not offended but what I am is concerned because Callum Wilson's just come back from a little injury that we weren't sure like how it happened or whatever the weather has turned I don't know where you're watching but in Newcastle the weather has turned and it feels autumnal and we're all wearing coats and I know that he is training and you warm up when you're training but it was an outdoor scenario presumably in the northeast put a top on put a top on I'm not having him catching his death of cold just as he gets back from injury that's all I have to say on that very wise advice from someone who who you know isn't Mary Whitehouse. And <laughs> you're right, Charlotte. There are worse things on the internet to see. You know, I wouldn't know if, if you know where to look. And, and neither you nor I nor any viewer would. No. But but I'm going to blow your mind. Maybe I'm not sure him and or he and fellow professionals also pictured topless training. I'm not so sure they're in Newcastle, Charlotte. I'm just putting it out there. I, I don't think they were here. Nah. Well, you know what? I hope they weren't. I hope they weren't. I hope they were somewhere tropical. I hope they were in the Maldives. <laughs> the Maldives. Yeah. You never know. This is a changing football club. Oh my God, honestly, look at that. Okay, let's talk about Crystal Palace at home. We are back. 
I mean, fine, Charlotte, you, you know, there's been football during the international break loads of places, not just at Kingston Park for Newcastle women. So I'll not say there's been no football, but in my Thank life, you. maybe most people watching and probably nearly everyone watching, there's been no football for the best part of two weeks. We play Crystal Palace at home, Charlotte. Then we play Borussia Dortmund at home in a chance yeah. to almost qualify for the Champions League second round, which is mental. Uh, then we have Wolves. Then we have Man United in the Carlin Cup at like quarter past 11 kickoff or some mental yeah. thing like that. Uh, and then we play, I believe, Arsenal at home. Am I right? Am I right? We'll play someone That's else correct. after that. Anyway, and then we go to and then we go to Germany and play Borussia Dortmund just after Arsenal. I'm tired just thinking about it. How do you feel about all of the games starting, all of the week, all of the weeks, all of the weekends? It's back, isn't it? Well, it's back, baby, and it's back with a vengeance. And if we get through the Carabao Cup, uh, Man United thing, then there's another game gets slotted into December. Um, which is already a crunchy little month. It usually is anyway. And then we've got now we've got Champions League fixtures to kind of finish up at the beginning. Cup ties, league ties, and potentially no players available to play. So um, really looking forward to all of that. But I think Crystal Palace are a team in free fall a little bit. Like they're, they're such a patchy team. They're such a weird team. They have been for years. But I think they're eminently beatable. Whether or not the news or like whatever's going on at St. James, not at St. James, but at Newcastle behind the scenes has impacted players mentally and we're a bit off the ball in, in that respect. And I know a couple of players to have yet to come back from international duty and get back with the squad or they'll be on their way back. And whether or not they'll have sort of got back in to, to first year um remains to be seen but I'm happy football's back I'm happy it's back for now might not be as happy in two weeks when my eye bags are eye suitcases and (laughs) I am delirious with fatigue but for now I'm happy I want to see our players play I want to be back in St James's Park and I'm excited love the excitement and the positivity I mean you know, Crystal Palace, are they in free fall? Did they win the last away game at Old Trafford? Someone else check the internet, Charlotte. You're going to look I anyway. don't think that counts because Man U are shite. <laughs> so. Yeah, they are They are that. Um, but, you know, they've got loads and loads of injured players. We might exactly. have class lads to come back in. I'd be hopeful of, you know, Joe Linton Botman. and or Sven Botman coming back in. Callum Wilson should be back. And, you but know. They haven't got pneumonia. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's exciting. You know, it, it, like we had this little run of fixes, didn't we, from the last international break and everything was absolutely fucking tremendous apart from the gambling of the expensive player. But the football and the results, brilliant. Who knows what the next international break in November will throw at us uh, in terms of unexpected stuff. But you're right, it's a massive part of our season. We have, we have the chance to all but qualify for the Champions League, a double header against Dortmund, a chance to go to Old Trafford and maybe put... Uh, write some of those wrongs from the Carling Cup final. I know, I know, Charlotte, it's a different sponsor. I don't care. Cup competition last season and some league points to, to go at. And I just think, I think, you know, it'd be really interesting to see whether Tonali does play if he still isn't banned at this point on Saturday. You get a great reception from the crowd, you know, whatever happens. Bit of a head fuck, really, for him. This is like my last game for nearly two years. But Eddie will do the right thing. And it is, it's just a, you know, it's it's kind of nice to go back into the just, this is really exciting. Newcastle are mint. We're going to beat Palace, probably smash Dortmund and deal with the rest of them beyond that. Let's do a hashtag Ask TFTV, Charlotte. Hashtag, I'm holding my microphone today, so it's not as neat because it's always very neat. <laughs> <laughs> This one at is from TFTV. at Hugh Griffin fifty three thirty two, uh, and it's for you, Charlotte. Um, Thank you. Not for me. It says, Charlotte, what do you mm-hmm. cook for your son as a treat for playing well? He looks like a fish fingers guy to me. Does he look like a fish fingers guy to you, Hugh? He looks like a nuggets man to me. I mean, he is a nuggets man because I cook for him. So it's chicken nuggets, but like the like specially selected ones from Aldi, you know, so they're a bit fancier than, you know, they're a chunkier, more rustic looking nug. And then um, he has to have a balanced meal. So um, greens, 
he's got to eat his greens. I'm really excited, and as you said, it's uh, it's part of maturing, and I'm getting a bit older now, so it'll be exciting. It's usually peas. He's a big pea guy. Um, I'll do steamed buttery new potatoes, and potentially some beans if he wants them. A little bit of sauce. He likes wet food. I think I know. That's his treat meal. <laughs> If you're new to this channel and you haven't watched one of these before, you've probably got no fucking clue what's going on. I uh, think even if you've been here a while, you yeah. probably don't know. <laughs> Where is the? Could you explain to me the joke and what you just said? Because it just sounds like um, you described joke... an imaginary meal. For... <laughs> Somewhere along the line, I started pretending that Anthony Gordon was my son and that he's very young and, and my tiny child. That's the joke. That's the, that's the, not that's as good. I actually think maybe we should go back to not explaining all our jokes. Yeah, that would probably be better. But thanks for the question, Hugh. You got your answer. That was nice. Um, Anthony Gordon, of course, suspended against West Ham in the last game. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a tremendous miss because in the first half, his replacement, Elliot Anderson, had to be moved to a centre forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we just didn't play with anyone on the left. But he'll be back against Palace. Um, and I think we'll win because he's mint. And, you know, for all of the issues around Tonali, Charlotte, you can look at Anthony Gordon and say, well, everything was shit for Gordon for a little while. Completely different circumstances. Not yeah, wholly good, different. But it did it did get better eventually. I'll stock so, up the freezer with the nags. <laughs> That's it, Sandro. Um, if you know what's good for you, get yourself around Charlotte's for food. I don't know who else would be there. I don't know who else you cook for, Charlotte, for the Newcastle United first team. Probably oh, it's no whoever one. Anthony brings home. <laughs> I think we're going to leave this one there for this week. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Um, probably do a reaction video to Newcastle United to Crystal Palace nil. Um, Charlotte and I will speak to you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>